Good morning, April 11, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1 Web Technology, and night. Today is day number 23 in the week number 12. That's the second last week, no, I better say the third last week in the semester. So let's get started. First of all, welcome back to today's class. After almost two weeks without Monday, uh, so finally we get back to our class on Monday. And today, if you look at the calendar and also the Moodle environment, it is week number 12, and today is day number 23. Now, in the midst to Monday, so unfortunately, we have to start doing the team based presentation this week together with about half an hour next week because we're five teams. Now, if you do not do it today, then we have to reschedule you so somehow next week. Then the consequence is if you look at the message that I sent you uh, yesterday on the specific uh, call for participation for your speech of the semester, SNOT, then we would not be able to have all the SNOT to accommodate uh, all the students in. Now, yesterday, I sent out this message for bonus work. Um, you're free to give me a speech of the semester based on a very simple question. What have you learned in this semester? And you need to prepare our form, which contain not more than 50 slides. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, you need to press reply and sign up here um, starting next week, Monday, April the 18th, first day, April the 21st, Monday, the 14th with April the 25th, and the first day, April the 28th. Now the last day, fortunately, we have a makeup class day on May the 3rd. Now that is Tuesday, remember, not Monday, not first day. That's the last day scheduled by the university for us because they see that there are many holidays on Monday. So we have five specific days and we can accommodate four students per day. All right? Now, remember, each student, if you choose to do the speech of the semester stuff, you will be given 10 minutes, 10 minutes, all right? And you can earn a maximum of extra semester credit of 10 semester more. And that's a lot, okay? Because you will be evaluated on a 100 point basis at the end of the semester. And by doing that, you can earn up to 10 semester more. Now, my experience in the last semester told me almost all the students signed for this, okay? Because there is an extra 10 points. So that is uh, bonus work number one, all right? So I hope you will consider signing up for this. You need to tell in front of the class what you have learned in the semester, covering learning content one, two, and three, uh, explaining what helped you in terms of IBL, what made you become more mature as an SRF student, and finally, with your experience in problem-based learning. Then, you selectively share that the topics of interest you have already done. Uh, actually, it's something called, for, it's an actual a block of the semester, but we call it speech, because you have to do it and present it in front of the students. Okay, so this is an important announcement sent out yesterday, and I hope you pick it up. All right, so another important announcement is this. I also sent out a teacher's message for week number 12, and that is a very important message which tells you it's very important that you should not miss the three learning hard resources put up there for the whole semester, or you can learn something systematically as a student. If you really cannot follow the learn to learn model, okay, this is a talk to learn model which helps you to follow the PowerPoint, the question set, and also some discussions with your partner. But this is something very useful for you to prepare your last mileage in the semester that is called your learning portfolio. Last week, I sent out to you the minute of the last four weeks, uh, week number 11, 12, 13, and 14, as it's, it's the period we call it IL, Integrative Learning. It's when you have to put things together to ask yourself, what does it mean to learn this in the first learning contract, learn that in the second learning contract, and learn that in the third learning contract. Look at the topic you choose, okay? And then it's time for you to connect them and ask the question, 
what is what do we suppose to learn in this course for web technology and why? Okay, so intuitive learning give you a chance to connect things together. And the way to connect it is to put it in your learning portfolio, which is, has already been installed for you as a wiki in the UN Moodle environment study from week number 11 last week. You can see definitely the wiki link here if you scroll down to week number 11. Okay? If you scroll down to week number 11, okay? So you can see that right here in the tools to track your learning. Here is a very important name called personal e-portfolio space. It's a wiki. You have to construct on the wiki the front page of personal information, introductions of yourself, and what you did in the semester covering the free learning contract, or if you did not submit an artifact to the second learning contract, what you produce, just repeat what you produce and create some names so that people can click on the links and see your work. And then the most important thing in the portfolio is the kind of speech of the semester stuff. You have to reflect on what you've learned on each one of this. Okay? Now, suppose in, uh, in the first learning contract you write a blog, in the last learning contract you also write a blog. Uh, compare the blog writing in the first learning contract and the last learning contract, you should see the differences. Uh, most of you write feelings based blog in the first learning contract. But in the third learning contract is what we call story around the topic blog. Okay? You learn something from the topic, you create a very interesting story based on the work done uh, together with the efforts of your team or task force partner, and then you learn something about that topic. And in the specific learning portfolio, you provide learning contract one, two, three artifacts. Uh, you put over there your scores earned, all right? And you just come to uh, the reflections of what you learned in the semester, particularly the topics you have already done, and you produce your block of the semester, which is the basis of the speech of the semester. Okay, so basically it's a funnel. You have done a lot of things, now you put them together and you want to steal into from it something of your semester-based learning. It's a different way from the traditional final exam. In the traditional final exam, you follow the syllabus, you cover everything, and the teacher will tell you, you need to remember this, remember that, and come here and write uh, the exam in terms of answer the question. But in a, this general education process, I start off by telling you, my purpose is to have you to transition from taught to learn student to learn to learn student. That means you will become your own teacher. It is not that you do not need a teacher, but you do become your own teacher, and you know where you spend your time in and what you have accomplished. And so the e-portfolio is what we call the final exam equivalent okay, of your work. We do not have official final exam as we told you at the beginning of the semester because we install the e-portfolio concept. Each one of you need to put together what you've done in an e-portfolio. And basically you have to repeat the artifacts you have already produced and put it over there and write what we call refractions based on those artifacts and try to put them together in the context of a broad of the semester. What do you have learned? Alright? So that is that is your final exam. Okay, and it's it's 20 points by doing this. Okay? But most importantly, okay, if you look at my teacher's message of yesterday, I told you something very important. And that is what you know from the beginning of the semester, how you're going to obtain your score based on the 100 semester on basis. Now you know that uh, after the first learning contract, in order to help you not to be burdened with a lot of the workload, we extend it so that you do not need to produce the artifact for learning contract number two. Instead, you just need to produce the artifact according to the schedule of learning contract number three. And so the assessment plan becomes this one, okay? So instead of 10% of the learning contract number two, you have 20% of the learning contract number three instead of the original 10. And on this, you know that you still have 100% here, but as I told you, you can choose to do the speech of the semester bonus work because most of you, if you cannot have done 10 times, 
income sharings here, you may not be able to get this 20%, okay? Which I hope everyone of you who got this 20% together with the 15% of local activity. So in, in case we really have not done 10 times the in-class sharing, now I highly recommend that you take up this bonus work of speech of the semester. Because by doing this, you will obtain 10% at most of the semester score, which is equivalent to five in-class participations that you have to read the bonus work a message minutes ago that's so good to get there. Yes? Yes, yeah. Basically, I answered the question yesterday also. If you have already fulfilled all the sharing, in class sharing for learning content number three, you should have already five times in class sharing. Okay? You need to count. Okay? You need to count. Because uh, you can find the records of your video uh, according to the free with week number eight, with number nine, with number ten. And you just need to extract the record and tell, I did the sharing over there how many times. At most, it should be five times. Now, of course, once you have done the team-based presentation today, it should be six times. You see that meaning? And, of course, the team-based presentation will give you an extra five semester quarter. And you read the message here. All right? So, then, actually, you should have already done this. But for those of you who still have not done this, this should happen. Okay? Because, as I, you can see, that we still have two weeks left. All right? So, Based on that, I hope that many of you will understand that. Now, but you have to understand how to crane the score here in the 20% here and 50% here. That is what you need to do in your learning portfolio. In your learning portfolio, you need to reproduce all this item. Your fun pages are contain this, actually. Okay? This is what you need to include in your fun page. And then you have a link here, you click into this particular link, and you know that the actual score you obtain is 10%. But if you read my message before the midterm exam, you know what happened? I would reward you, each one of you who have done learning contract number one, no matter what your actual score earned it, you will obtain 10% full score. This is called the encouragement score. So basically, each one of you should put down 10% here. But when you construct your learning portfolio, okay, you must also put down the score that you actually earn, okay, based on my grade. That is your refractions, okay. But when you, and when I take into account a counting of score, each student will put down 10% here, okay. I want you to know the comparisons, and then of course with this one. There is no score here because you did not submit an artifact. But this one, by the end of this one, you should know the score individually. All right? So, and for the midterm, again, by the end of this one, you should know the score. So, you have already done this, you have already done this, you have already done this. Now, principally speaking, this is week number 12. You should have also done this because that is based on 10 journal and 5 rock. Each uh, of the 10 journal comes on week number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So one journal per week. Okay, so now you just need to extract the journal, copy and paste into your e-portfolio under this link. Okay, you must create a link in your e-portfolio to this also. And then you need to select five out of this 10 journal and write five blocks based on the five journals work. Okay? So by doing this, you got 10 points. By doing that, you got 5 points. And then you can give yourself 15 points. Now, you have to, re you have to reproduce the contents of the 10 journal and the 5 blocks under your e-portfolio. Okay? So you, you have to experience a writing wiki now. So if you go e-portfolio, which is based on the wiki in the Moodle environment, in your front page, you must contain these set of informations. All right? And of course, if you do not do this, you do not contain this. But by including this in your e-portfolio, you yourself are aware of how many points you've already earned already. All right? My job is to make sure that by the end of this week, I give you this score and this score. Well, I work with drugs, there are 700 items. All right? So, and then, you have all the information you need, 
And then you also know the score here, how many times it will be done by going back to the forum where you sign up. And because when you sign up something, you are allowed to do the in-class sharing. And in the in-class sharing, you're also obliged to do the related sharing information there. So going back to the core for participations forum on each of the previous templates, you can count the number of times you did your in-class sharing. And if you've already done 10 times, you give yourself 20 points. And of course, when you give yourself two points per in-class sharing, you must create records in in-class sharing. Uh, very simple, day of the year, uh, day of the class, uh, the YouTube link, the sub-descriptions of what you share, and the minutes from which minute to which minute you appear in the YouTube link. Basically, something like that. That's the reason why we keep the YouTube videos for your convenience to know when you did the in-class sharing and for your convenience to review what we did in class, okay? So, now it's time for you to design for yourself because we're almost done for the whole semester. And after you've done all of these, then you can also create 20% of your learning portfolio, okay? The learning portfolio contains some work you, you, you do, uh, including the very important elements, reflections. You reflect on what you did in the semester, connect what you did with the learning outcomes of the course, the learning objectives of the course, and ask yourself where the semester course will be environment have those important contacts being discussed of your center. Because your job is to make sure you go over them and use them, all right? Use them for your own learning purposes. Okay, having said that, I expected uh, you have to complete the learning part of the university feedback questionnaire, and most of you did. Uh, according to the result here, I think only three students have not done this. So I hope you finish doing this uh, before the end of the day, and I can publish the result for you uh, before this first day. So it helps me to understand uh, your learning conditions or situations by completing this questionnaire before the end of today. That is the last day. All right? And then I say, if you do the presentations, your team-based presentations for learning module number three this week, because we cannot allow a repeated or duplicate chance, uh, you will got 5% extra semester part for your team-based presentations. And of course, when your team come here to do the presentations, as a member, you must be there to take part in the presentations to be qualified or take this five extra points, okay? So basically, we have 15 extra points as, as the bonus for you to earn your design work rate. That is more than enough based on my experience in the past semester. So I really hope that you're ready now so that I'll give you 30 minutes to do the team race presentations for learning contract number three. That is something very stimulating, okay? And that is what I can help you to speed up your learning in the semester and also make sure you got a good grade, all right? It's your choice, all right? So don't miss, wow, if you did this, 20%, 15%, that's 35%, you got this also, you got 15% already, and you have another seven very good grades. So not only it's not difficult to get at least a B or B plus in this course if you know that this is what you can manage, all right? So are you ready? I think I finished talking. Uh, I've already spat, spoken for 20 minutes. Which team is ready? And give you 30 minutes now. Jennifer, Alex, are you ready? Okay. Make sure you do not lose a chance because this is the week we have already single out for the team based presentation. Are you ready? I give you five minutes to do it. But remember, um, we can only accommodate two teams per class, all right? Two teams per class. So get yourself ready in five to ten minutes. Can we do our first team? It's really up to you. But after this week, it's very difficult. Because next week, we start the speech of the semester. When people sign up, we need to respect the decisions. So the first day is okay, right? so Yes, yes. If you, if you want to do it the first day, you have to make sure you select the first. Because you only allocate two teams per class. 
Okay? So if you are going to do it first day, so suppose I accept it, so another team need to be ready. And okay? you should not miss the chance at first. All right, thank you. Yes. All right, so yes, if you have a question, you can ask me. Let's get ready. Because I mentioned this already, because if we do not give you score for this presentation, that's not enough statements. So when you do it, 5%. All right, okay. All right, if you have a question, definitely I can come to you. So it's very important you read this bonus work message call for speech of the semesters. And it's also very important that you pay attention to week number 12, the teacher's message on the allocations of your score for the semester. And also you need to start working with your personal wiki that is the learning portfolio. You, you start this week, you still have week number 13, 14, and last week is week number 15. Three to four weeks time to do it. All right, and according to my teacher's message here, your e-portfolio should be ready on May 3rd, okay, on May 3rd. That is the, um, you have, I guess, um, three and a half weeks to do this. If we start with this week, okay, that's more than enough. At least we have one team who would like to do it today. That is from Eason and Dishon. All right. Is your team ready? Okay, then you become the second team. All right. So we have 30 minutes. So let's get get started. Uh, we can do it in two team sessions. You want to start now, uh, Eason, or you want to give a chance to them first? Okay. At most 30 minutes. All right. So. You have the power pod, right? Excellent. That's important. Okay, please go. Thank you. Okay, and let's see. Like this one. All right. Or if you didn't, is it just um? Let's try. It's best. It's best for you to upload it to your wiki. PowerPoint in your team wiki, so it's easier when you come here to do the presentation. 
You don't do a team working, you click on your PowerPoint, all right? Because otherwise, you will waste a little bit of your time necessarily. So you please make sure your PowerPoint is up Thank you. That's the way to go. That's the reasons why we need the wiki. Okay. Thank you, Ethan. Microphone, please. Thank you, Ethan. Now is science observations. Science, please speak into the microphone.
Thank you, uh, Sian. Thank you, Ethan.
Thank you very much for the two of you sharing uh, your learning contract number three's experience. Ethan, do you have something to add at the end? Thank you, thank you. All right, so we can give you the chance to do it. Right? We thank you very much. You need to log out and then, do you need to log in? Okay, please go ahead and log in. Thank you very much. You did a good job. Please have a seat. Yeah, 
do not have this communication, we will not know what is our business is actually actually uh, performing. Maybe uh, there is a risk in our business, we will be fired, but uh, everyone didn't know about it because they didn't uh, talking about it. So, uh, will the employee will do not have a large sense of belongings to the business and, and because of this, this will uh, decrease, the, decrease the motivation uh, in their work and this will affect their working performance. And this is the comment. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. So, So if we have a 
small group of staff, then the manager or the employer can have an easier time to, to manage them and operate the whole company. So this project that I have come up with that I'm doing my diversification. Um, one of the negative things that I have felt on social media is that first of all, please never mention if you are uh, in this only starting up, it doesn't have Usually people will not recognize you because it's too small and, and the internet, uh, the popularity of internet is still not big enough to affect everyone online watching your work is in the internet. So if you find a web on advertising online posting advertisement on YouTube or something like that, this is uh, one way of doing it. And the second effect is uh, some Virtual office is not reliable. What do you mean by not reliable? Because uh, on social media, uh, the law applied on virtual office application is still not fully functional. So if some uh, someone came in the internet and said, I can do some service for you, but they don't have the, uh, the law to protect it, then it's, it's not quite reliable to trust if I want to use that service or not. So uh, this is also a great to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Every 
we think we'll need to have a balance use. We cannot overuse some overfocus or overuse of some kind of things, and it will become uh, a mass at last. And then I will talk about the uh, future trend and the transform of virtual office applications. In the future, there is a trend that uh, they jump out of the square of office. They become a market application. Like uh, in the recent year, I recognize there is some news about uh, uh, the uh, virtual markets can have connections with your home when maybe uh, when your uh, when maybe you your home is a uh, lack of toilet paper then they will have, they will uh, they will connect with the virtual market like uh, Taobao uh, about uh, maybe your famous uh, shops to buy the toilet paper and give you and trend and transport the toilet paper to your home immediately. Maybe this kind of uh, virtual uh, applications, they jump out of the platform of office and enter our, our life, uh, make our life much more uh, convincing. And actually, have, our group has and other members also is talk about the future trend, but she didn't come, so uh, I will skip her. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Annie. And thank you, Jerry. So we need to give you a lot of Peter's team some big hands for doing this presentation for us. And actually, from reading your PowerPoint and the thinking, it's very appreciated. OK. Um, we do have two teams who have finished the presentations today. And you can tell the differences. Um, uh, the individual team might put the emphasis on the part of their presentations and I have to tell you that uh, it's very important at the end of your presentations of the topic itself to include a little bit of the reflections of the learning why wow, that's very important all right so uh, allow me to attendance and then I'm going to show you a little bit of what integral learning is all about in the context of portfolio all right let me Lock in myself first. It's very important to reserve some time to make sure that you are connected with what you're doing. Okay? Allow me to take attendance first. It just takes about one or two minutes. Candy is here, Mia is here, Andy is here, Tisha is here, uh, Tom is here, Tommy is here, Tom <coughs> is not here, uh, Jerry is here, Tammy is here, Francis is here, and then Joanna is here, Peter is here, Romina is not here today. So Jennifer, Sheila, Nari is not here today, and Candy is here. So Alex is here, Eason is here, and that's it. Thank you very much. All right, now let's move back to the very last milestone of this semester, which starts from week number 11. If we visit the rock in the middle side, week number 11, you can see that the theme is intuitive learning, and the topic is learning portfolio. So basically for week number 11, 12, 13, and 14, we just have one reading list, although it's called reading list for 1, 11, 12, 13, and 14. The reading list contains two questions. What is a learning portfolio? You need to have some basic understanding what learning portfolio is all about. Actually, increasingly, learning portfolio is a very good approach to, uh, to be adopted instead of final exam. Uh, Luckily, final exam is the kind of mechanism we use to test on a specific student's knowledge at a specific point in grades. 
but a portfolio is basically a tool which believes that formative assessment is even more important than what we call summative assessment. So it's a portfolio to be constructed by you yourself to prove to others that you have spent time learning something and you have already delineated what you're learning using the approach of the time-based portfolio to tell people what you have done, what you have learned, and what you have shared with others. So if I recommend you, if you allow me to recommend you a reading from the first question, I would say the first one is a very important content. It comes from the idea center. Okay? You click on this, you will be given a very important paper. Okay, the paper is written by this wonderful professor, Sabi Sabi Zaretta. Okay, and this is a very significant paper which influenced a lot of people in college education. So you can see that in the portfolio, basically it includes a refraction element, which is very much demonstrated by ease and steam, documentations of what you did, what you learned, and collaborations of how you got what you get. All right, so it's a very useful paper to help you to get started with this idea. And in this GE course, you have the opportunity to experience different learning style, IBL, or WITS, self-regulated learning, free WITS, on-based learning, free WITS, and then you try to put all the learning together, the IBL, SRL, IBL, with respect to the different topics you select, and your team select, your peer select, and you try to document them, you collaborate with others, and finally, in the last four weeks of the semester, you do refractions by getting, getting them together in the form of a wiki. So it's a very important uh, uh, learning, and I hope you can enjoy it. And of course, the second important paper, which if you want me to um, recommend to you, let's see if it's here. Um, let's see. It's this one. How to create a personal learning portfolio of students online and offline. This is another very wonderful reading because this is what you're doing in this very last miles of the semester. And it's excellent, all right? Now, this is actually a blog, okay? A blog on online learning insights on how to create a personal learning portfolio, students and professional. I, I, I could I share with you that I personally learned a lot of this reading, okay? So you can see that. So if you do not have a lot of time, this will be good enough. And of course, uh, there are also a lot of questions here for on the e-portfolio stuff. So, e-portfolio. Well, rigorously speaking, we are not actually doing a lot of e-portfolio, which you can do it after the completion of this semester using your Mahara account, okay? Your Mahara account uh, if you stay in the residential college in which you're obliged to create your e-portfolio Mahara Bates. Okay, then you can come back in and select your super reading again. All right, so this is something very important. Now, the next things I want you to be experienced in the context of the practicality of the e-portfolio is to come here, date number 22, and you will be brought to something like this, okay? And a number of videos here will be very useful on the use of ePoFOE. And I'm going to use one simple example in five minutes' time, which is taken out from the City University of Hong Kong. It's a very useful piece because there, each student is obliged to present an ePoFOE before they even graduate. Okay, that is a very interesting step. All right. She applied for an interim job in the summer holidays. In a group interview, Emily was surprised to see the other candidates were very competent at telling people what they were good at and showing concrete examples to showcase their achievements. Emily was confused. She had also prepared for the interview. Why was she not as confident as the other candidates? Soon after the interview, Emily found out their killer strategy was something called ePortfolio. <coughs> so, what is an ePortfolio? An ePortfolio is a way of presenting yourself online 
a multimedia environment of personal artifacts selected for a specific purpose from a personal repository or archive. In an e-portfolio, you can showcase your best work to present evidence of your expertise and accomplishments to a specific audience, such as an employer or a teacher. An e-portfolio can also be a learning and management tool to help you organize your goals and activities and to encourage deep learning through collaboration and reflection. No wonder that the other candidates were so confident and competent. Now Emily realized that her CV and covering letter were really not sufficient. Emily decided to create her own e-portfolio. But confronted by piles of work and loads of information she wanted to present, Emily was lost. How could she deal with all of this in one single e-portfolio? You may have the same question as Emily did. Here are four steps you can follow to organize your work and information. Step 1. Start collecting the footprints of your life, which can be the work you have done or thought written down. The collection becomes your personal database. Step 2. Spend some time thinking about who you are and what you want to be. Identify your goals, they can be short term or long term, and come up with action plans. Step 3. Follow your plans. In the meantime, reflect on your performance and thinking when carrying the plans out. Step 4. Organize your work and reflection and put them in your database. Emily had been collecting her work and reflecting on her experiences during her time at Sydney. When looking for a job, Emily selected relevant information from the pool and created her employment in portfolios. She could therefore talk more fluently about her achievements and provide more concrete examples of her expertise to impress potential employers. Now Emily is a manager in her company, and she continues to use an e-portfolio to manage her professional development and present her achievements. Okay, so you see that it's a very practical approach. It's a very important lifelong learning skill. Uh, I hope that you will not miss using this. Uh, Indeed, at the University of Macau, the New State University of Macau, the purpose of giving you the Mahamari Khan is to do something like this. But it's really up to you to prepare yourself, to pull together the learning, the artifacts, the different courses together to create your, your portfolio to showcase to others when you go to work, when you get prime for high education in the graduate school. So, so much for today, and I hope that when we come back on the first day, we can listen to Joanna's team and also your team, all right? So, as well as your team, all right? So, we thank you very much, and make sure to sign up for the speech of the semester if you believe you need it. And if you have not done the questionnaire for learning project number three, make sure you complete it before the end of today, and I'm going to publish the result for you tomorrow. Thank you, all right? CRSG 114, section 1, Web Technology and Light, date number 23, week number 12.